We are joined this week by one of the greatest Bengals of all time, Boomer Esiason. And Boomer, let's start with an obvious topic, and you know what's coming, Joe Burrow. You had a great career, 14 years, MVP, took the Bengals to the Super Bowl. Is there anything about Joe Burrow at age 26 in his third season that you wish you had had in your playing days? Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's, it's, I wish I were playing during this, uh, during this time in the NFL. It's a completely different game than when we played back in the, you know, in the 80s, and I don't want to always go back to that, but uh, it's a different game. It's more wide open. Uh, these kids are more prepared coming out of college than we were when we were coming out of college. So, you know, I think he has lived up to every single expectation that I certainly had for him coming out of LSU. I remember talking to Jeff Hobson uh, before the draft, and, and he asked me, why are you so sure Joe Burrow is going to be the first overall pick? I said, have you watched him play? Uh, have you watched <laughs> the boys that he, uh, that he possessed on the field for LSU? Did you watch that national championship game? I mean, the kids who can't miss players. So, you know, you, you combine that, and I've said this, you know, many years now watching him play, you combine that with his – his whole aspect of being a, a point guard in the high school and being an all-state point guard, uh, you understand that he understands distribution, leadership, and how to run a football team. So I'm not surprised by any of this, Dan. And as a matter of fact, I think uh, he's going to go to even greater heights, and he'll get his Super Bowl. If it's not this year, it will be in the next coming years. Boomer, he might not have the arm talent of Patrick Mahomes. He doesn't have the legs of Lamar Jackson. But I say he's the perfect quarterback for this franchise, and I wouldn't trade them for anybody. You know the city, you know the fan base, you know ownership. Do you agree with that? Yeah, but you know, he's an Ohio kid too. I mean, so he gets the whole thing and uh, he's a local kid and he's done well and he's uh, exceeded every single expectation. There's no question about that. You know, he, uh, he can run, believe me. Uh, he's an athlete. He just wants to play quarterback like Tom Brady plays quarterback. I, you know, I would, I would basically compare him to a young Tom Brady. This is what Brady looked like when he finally took over and he, and he really, uh, you know, basically ran the offense for the New England Patriots. So uh, what we're watching, to me, in terms of the way that he plays, is the way that Tom Brady plays the game. You know, Josh Allen uh, plays fearlessly. Uh, he can be chaotic at times, but his game has been refined to now – you know, whether it be him, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, or Joe Burrow, you know, we're looking at the four best quarterbacks in the league right now. Uh, and I guess in another year or so, Trevor Lawrence will probably join that group. But uh, the big four, as I like to put them in the AFC, you know, all bring something special to their own franchise. And I think all these teams pick the right guys. And when you think about marrying them to the coaching staff, to the city, and to everything that they're bringing to their football teams, all four of those players are perfect fits for their uh, respective organizations. Let's talk about some news of the week, and that involves right tackle L. Collins. In the 88 Super Bowl season, you lost your great right tackle, Joe Walter, final game of the regular season when he was playing at a Pro Bowl level. Now the Bengals have lost L. Collins for the rest of this season. What problems does that present this late in the year? You know, for us, we had Brian Blados uh, that uh, subbed in for uh, Joe Walter. Everybody says, why did I have a number 63 in my helmet that year? Well, that was Joe's number, and Joe was a big part of our success, much like Stanley Wilson was. Um, you know, it's got to be the next man up mentality. You know, when Jamar Chase went down, who do they bring in? Trenton Irwin. Like, everybody's like, who is Trenton Irwin? Uh, well, Trenton Irwin turned out to be a pretty damn good player, so – you never know when that opportunity is going to present your, uh, present itself to the next player that is the next man up. And Adinaje has played in big games before. He knows what's going on. You know, he's not going to be overwhelmed. He's not a rookie. Uh, let's see how he does first. And this is going to be a really good test for him because the Buffalo Bills have a good pass rush. Not a great pass rush. It's not facing Von Miller out there. I can tell you that. So luckily for Joe Burrow, uh, you know, Von Miller is out for the rest of the season for the Bills. So, you know, it's like you got to think about the locker room itself and how guys look at each other and how long they've been, you know, working together and playing together. And he's there for a reason. He's there for depth. And the one good thing about the Bengals is that they have had a lot of good depth all throughout their roster this year. When guys have gone down, other guys have stepped up. So Hayden Hurst missed a couple games. Now all of a sudden, Trent Irwin is one of those middle down the middle patterns. You know, at, at six foot two, uh, it's like you're throwing it to a tight end. He may not be as heavy as one, but he's as tall as one, and he's got the athleticism of a wide receiver. So that's the mentality that every team in the league has to have, and that's the mentality that Zach Taylor has definitely brought to the Bengals. So 
I know that there's people out there saying that they should go out and sign, you know, Whitworth and bring him back and all that other stuff. Number one, I don't know if he wants to play anymore. And number two, that would reek of desperation. To me, that's not who the Bengals are. That's not what this organization is all about. This organization is all about next man up, put him out there. He's experienced and we can win with them because hell they won with them last year. Why couldn't they do it again this year? We're chatting with Boomer Esaias and three coaches have already been fired this year, including Nathaniel Hackett, who was in his first year uh, on the job in Denver. The Bengals stuck with Zach Taylor through two tough seasons and now they're reaping the benefits. What do you admire and respect about Zach Taylor and the job he's done in Cincinnati? Well, Zach was lucky. He uh, was able to draft Joe Burrow. <clears throat> and that's the most important you know, position in all of sports. You got to have the quarterback. You got to have the unquestioned leader, the guy that inspires everybody else. And that includes the defense, the special teams, the front office, the fan base. You know, you have somebody to sell. And it's one of the reasons why the Bengals are so popular, why they're on uh, national television as much as they are, and why this game was selected to be on Monday night before the season even started, because whoever put the schedule together knew that this was going to be a meaningful game. So I, I think Zach Taylor has done a, a magnificent job, but it's really more the patience of the Bengals. Like we used to make fun of it. You know, Marvin Lewis was there for 15 years. And, you know, Mike Brown has never one to react to fan uh, pressure. He's never going to react to national pressure from people like me that may say, hey, this guy's got to be fired. That guy should be fired. Um, he's always going to do it his way. And that's been the bingo way for as long as I can ever remember. So I, I, I never thought in my wildest dreams that Mike would have gotten rid of uh, Zach early on in his career. Uh, you know, he's a young coach. He was learning on on the fly. And now when you see he and Joe come together and you see what it can really turn into, you realize that it's pretty special. This thing that happened in Indianapolis with my buddy Frank Wright, what happened in Denver, you know, it's obvious to see what happened. You know, they had older quarterbacks. Those older, older quarterbacks were not playing well. The team looks listless. Uh, you know, Russell Wilson has been awful this year. Matt Ryan has been, you know, I would say partly awful when it came to turnovers and things of that nature. You saw his uh, replacement, Nick Falls, throw interceptions. Those are the things that older quarterbacks do that get them in trouble, get their coaches in trouble. So, uh, that's not the case with the Bills or the Bengals because they have young, vibrant quarterbacks. They got really solid head coaches. One an offensive coach, Sean McDermott, is a defensive coach for the Bills. And that's why, you know, these coaches end up lasting a long time. Like Andy Reid, you know, he had Donovan McNabb for all those years. And then all of a sudden has Alex Smith and then drafts of Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't get much better than that for Big Red. So all I can tell you right now, Dan, is we got four great quarterbacks in the AFC, and it's going to be one wild playoff run. And I would tell you Monday night's game is going to be a playoff atmosphere, much like it was in week 13 when we played the Bills when they came to Cincinnati back in 1988 as well. Boomer, when people talk about great defensive minds in the NFL, they'll start with Belichick. They might mention Dan Quinn or Wink Martindale, whatever. Should Lou Anarumo be included on that list? So Lou Anarumo uh, came to the forefront last year. Uh, you know, we had their AFC championship game uh, out there in Kansas City. I, I don't know if you, you were doing the game, so you didn't see halftime when we had the speakers behind us, you know, just absolutely drowning everything out that we were saying. But I would, we were all talking about Lou Anarumo and his ability to change up, you know, in the second half of games. And, and he never gives the quarterback a comfort zone of seeing the same thing over and over and over again. Now, number one, you got to have really smart players on your defense to be able to pull stuff off like that. So the Bengals, you know, when you see their players, you saw Von Bell make this play at the end of the game last week, uh, and B.J. Hill fall on the ball, you know that they understand what's going on, where they are in the game, how important their plays are to be made. And what they did in the second half last year against Patrick Mahomes and what they did to Patrick Mahomes again this year, uh, you know, speaks volumes to who Lou Anarumo is, but really – the players that he has, the ability to adjust on the fly, have a plan and be patient with that plan. So if the you know if the Bills score 17 points in the first half on Monday night, you know he's not going to panic. He'll come back and he'll have something for the second half that Josh hasn't seen yet. So I, I think he's definitely a guy that is on everybody's radar now uh, because of their success. This has been one of the best defenses in football. You know they're not San Francisco. You know that's that's a defense that's on a different level. But I will say that the defense has come up with huge plays throughout the year, and uh, he's a big reason for that. But the players have to buy into what he's selling, and I think that's the combination that makes them work so well together. I did see the video of halftime last year in Kansas City. I'm glad you didn't suffer permanent hearing damage, or at least it doesn't appear that you did. Last thing for Boomer Esiason. 
Bills and Bengals, Monday night. You've talked about the importance of this game. What do you see as a couple of keys to victory on Monday? Well, you know, number one, uh, the Bills have a hard time with wide receivers. Uh, a lot of wide receivers have had big games against them. You know, they've played against Miami. They've struggled against Miami's wide receivers. And I would say that Cincinnati is right there with the Miami wide receivers, especially with the emergence of Trenton Irwin. And maybe they get Hayden Hurst back, too. So that creates a lot of problems down the field. They're not a blitzing team. They're a team that likes to play seven men in coverage. Uh, one of the reasons they went out and got Von Miller was to create that pressure so they can they can have more guys in the secondary. And they're going to need every guy they possibly can get in the secondary this week against this Bengal uh, wide receiver crew. So to me, if I was Zach Taylor, I walk in. Everybody knows the quarterbacks are important, so you don't have to talk to them. <laughs> they know what they got to do. But you say, hey, if we're going to win this game on offense, the wide receivers got to win the game. Because in my eyes, even with Trey Davis White back with the Buffalo Bills, that's where they're susceptible because they don't have the pass rush that they had prior to Von Miller's in, uh, injury. So, you know, to me that the wide receivers, you know, the big the big guys this week, they got to have the, the mammoth game. And I would like to think that they can. And then on the other side, you know, the Bills will run the ball a lot more. Uh, there's no question that, you know, last week they had a lot of success running the ball. But, you know, to me, you know, it's always Josh Allen. Josh Allen is the wild card because like Patrick Mahomes, you know, he's not uh, overly concerned about running with the ball. And, you know, they actually have bets in their quarterback room in Buffalo. I don't know if you guys knew this, that if he slides, then one of their guys has got to show up just with a jock on the walkthrough, uh, you know, on Wednesdays <laughs> because he never slides. He very rarely ever slides. So uh, he's the wild card, you know, so you've always got to have somebody aware of where he is going to be. And I'm sure that Lou Anarumo will come up with a plan to try to deal with like um, the, the plays that just happen naturally for Josh. And that's a big, big problem for everybody who plays the Bills. I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a high scoring game. And I think it's just going to be uh, kind of a glimpse into what I think is going to be another great playoff run. Uh, you know, for all of us on the AFC side, because we have uh, the best quarterbacks in the league. Boomer, you're the best. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas with your kids and grandkids. And we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure, Dan. Thank you very much. Go Bengals.